Hey folks, Jim Aliel here once again for episode 209 of Geeking Out. Yes. We're one week away from episode 210. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yes. We just keep going. That's right. Because you want to see comic book reviews. Well, honest comic book reviews. Yes. yes. With no visual effects or cheap. Low tech. <laughs> <laughs> We're very low tech. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could always just spend five thousand dollars and get a 3d camera and then do the show in 3d but then yes. uh no yeah. <laughs> but uh i mean i could always do green screen but it's just not worth it i to like me. wearing green <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to be and a and floating head <laughs> yeah yeah and it doesn't work very well for the frog either. No, no. but anyway <laughs> Um, let's get to some comic reviews, and first up, a book from last week that we missed. Yes. Uh, this is uh, Before Watchmen Rorschach, number one. Uh, so in this one, Rorschach looks into a drug ring in the city and runs afoul of a nasty gang with a sewer address. Meanwhile, the bard cl uh, it claims another victim, so it's like a serial killer going, or going around that... Um, Nobody seems to be on to yet. The cops are looking into it, but it's not looking it's good. It's Alan Moore. No. Yes. <laughs> Actually, it's Brian Azzarello. Oh. <laughs> um, now, what I really loved about this issue is that Azzarello's like, dark sensibility is a perfect fit for Rorschach, mm. and Liebermeo's art is a perfect fit as well. It's gorgeous art. Yes. This is a great team to have on this character. I really uh, enjoyed the whole presentation of it, and I did like the story and we're not just rehashing things that we'd already seen in the movie. Like, this is, you know, new stuff. So I, I thought that this was cool. And uh, one of the, the better reads as far as the Before the Watchmen series goes. So, um, you know, this one I mean, read all of them now. Uh, yeah. It, there haven't been that many that have been really memorable. Yeah, no, so. I found this one really memorable, and I did really enjoy Comedian. I like the Minutemen. And I love Silk Spectre, so. Yeah. So, you know, it's not all of them, but it's no, a good chunk. It's so. a good chunk. Yeah. Anyway, next up, Rachel Rising number 10. So let's catch up a bit with what's been going on yes. in Rachel Rising since it's been a few months. Yeah. Um, the demon Malice has now inhabited Jet's body, <laughs> which is unknown to everyone around her. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Rachel uh, and Jet decide to visit the hospital and see the young girl, Zoe, who tried to commit suicide last uh, last issue mm -hmm. to get the demon out of her that mm -hmm. now inhabits Jet. Yes. Okay. And after that, basically, uh, Rachel decides to go into the forest where she came out of the ground mm -hmm. as, well, undead yes. to find the woman who put her there. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuff. So, oh, so much going on. <laughs> and finally, Finally, you find out just what the heck is going on in this story. Oh, cool. So, apparently, 300 years ago, there were, there were witch trials in the city of Manson. Oh, okay. And the people who keep coming back are reincarnations of the people who were killed 300 years ago. So now this demon Malice mm -hmm. and the witch Lilith mm -hmm. have decided... Yeah, we're gonna burn Manson to the ground. Ah, oh, that's not that's not sounding good. No, so <laughs> no. It's pretty much going pro by the looks of things. It's gonna be up to Rachel to stop it all from happening. So, as always, Terry Moore's story and art are fantastic here. Mm -hmm. I really like where the story is going. It's dark yeah. sensibilities at its best, and mm -hmm. it's simply fantastic. Um, if you're not reading this one, why aren't you? It's just great. Pick up the first trade paperback and then the next few issues, and trust me, you will not regret it. <laughs> okay, next up we've got the uh, Buffy Season 9 tie-in, uh, Spike Number 1, uh, A Dark Place. Well, what yeah. do you know? Not written by Brian Lynch. <laughs> no, no. Um, so... After parting ways with Buffy, a broken-hearted Spike goes to San Francisco, but he needs more of a distraction than the city can provide. So he heads off to the dark side of the moon in a spaceship filled with human-sized bugs dark and attempts side. to drown his sorrow in a bottle <laughs> uh, of booze. Um, yeah, I'm not, I can't make this up. Um, but a hostile takeover of his ship is putting a crimp in his brooding. Um... 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really like it. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, the story is kind of ridiculous. I mean, when you're... I'm taking off in a spaceship with my, you know... Alien all my bug, bug legion. My bug legion. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, on the plus side, the art is pretty good. I, I yeah. have to say that. Uh it's very well done. Well, at least it's not Ruru. <laughs> and very much looks like James Marsters. And, Which is you, good. You know, so that's, you know, that is definitely a plus. But I don't really know what the redeeming aspects of this story are. Like, if you want something, mm. like, completely out there that doesn't seem to be in the Buffy universe at all, except for Spike is in it, <laughs> this is for you, I guess. <laughs> um, but other than that, well, I, I just couldn't get into it. this one's a bit hard it. to explain, huh? <laughs> it's a bit hard to explain. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't really get into it. Uh, but, you know, it, it, maybe it's, it's there for fans different than me. Uh, and and I'd like to know what you guys think about it because I just most of my time was I was reading it just shook my head and was like really <laughs> okay oh boy oh from the days of Brian Lynch okay. <laughs> I know. Uh, next up we have Doctor Manhattan number one written by J Michael Straczynski with art by Adam Hughes Love and in him. this one. Uh, John, a.k.a. Dr. Manhattan, narrates as an array of scenes from his past and present come back to him while exiled on Mars. Glimpses of his childhood, his time as a researcher, his troubled romantic entanglements, and his increasing detachment from reality mm -hmm. are all basically profiled here. Yes. So, Not a yeah. lot of new stuff, really. We're treading a lot of the same ground that um, Moore mm -hmm. did 20 plus years ago. Yeah, because um, it was a pretty central character in the book. You had yeah, to know yeah. what was going on with him, I think. Yeah. Right? So, um, what? I don't know what's left for for these guys to do, but... Well, that's the problem. I mean, there's really nothing new until the very end of the book, and even then you're like, what's going on? And it's yeah. like, mm -hmm. the whole thing is about, what's in the box? What's in the box? Yeah. <laughs> and it's almost every other page. What's in the box? Mm -hmm. Every time I read that line, I'm like, What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> nothing! <laughs> Absolutely nothing! Yeah. But anyway, uh, the art here by Adam Hughes, as always, is simply gorgeous, and it's mm -hmm. always great to see him drawing a new comic, because mm -hmm. we don't get that chance very often lately. Yeah. So, a chance to see Adam Hughes doing what he does best is always a great reason to pick up a book, mm -hmm. but for me, the story by Straczynski fails in almost every category, in that he's tr really trying, by my recollection anyway, to ape Moore's style of writing in this book. Yeah, and I think, well, I think they all are trying to sort of emulate or pay, yeah, pay tribute to, and some but, are succeeding in still being them and yeah, doing that. And but I, I uh, that. overall, it's not that great a book, but mm -hmm. if you're an Adam Hughes fan and have wanted to see something new from him, pick this one up. Yeah. Uh, for me, eh. It's an okay book. I just uh, can't highly recommend it. <laughs> okay, so next up is the big, amazing Spider-Man 692. Happy 50th anniversary, yes. Spider-Man. Happy 50th birthday, Spidey. You're doing a great job at 50. You don't look past uh, 18. <laughs> no, not a day over 18. Um, okay, so... Uh, you know, as you may or may not know. Just swinging or you might break your hip. Yeah. <laughs> this August is the 50th anniversary of, of Spider-Man. So it's, you know, kind of a big deal. So every Spider-Man book has sort of been gearing towards the anniversary. But this is sort of like the big culmination of all of that. Um, so there's three stories in here. The big one being Point of Origin by Dan Slott and Humberto Ramos. Mm. Yes. Always nice to see Ramos doing something. Oh, type. so good. Mm. So good. But anyways, okay. So this is the story of not Peter Parker but Andy McGuire, your average C student with absentee parents and an anemic social life. So kind of, you know, maybe sounds like Peter a bit, right? It's but, Toby McGuire's cousin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that all changes on a class trip to Horizon Labs to see Peter Parker's mm. new discovery, Parker Particles. <laughs> that just sounds terrible. Yeah. Um, you know what? Actually, um, I think it's later on in the book the thing actually makes fun of him for that. He's like, really? Parker particles? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that anyway. works there. Yeah. Um, but, an ac but an accident in the lab turns Andy into a superpowered mutant with of the most dangerous level. So, so they call him Alpha, which is like <laughs> the most 
dangerous mutants, I guess, right? Mm. So now Andy, a.k.a. Alpha, has been assigned to Spider-Man to learn the ropes, but he's a little anxious to get off um, the bench and into the action yeah. and, you know, doesn't always, you know, take pointers from all the other superheroes around him. Um, which, you know, when you have lots of power and responsibility, <laughs> you know... Screw it, I'm going to kill people. <laughs> y you know how that goes. So I did really enjoy this. Great art, great story, and it was an interesting character that I'm looking forward to following. Uh, you know, so that mission accomplished there. I thought that part of it was really good. Um, the second story, Spider-Man for a Night, is by Dean Hasbiel. Um, in this one, a man desperate for cash learns that it takes more to be a superhero than just dressing like one. And it was a really touching story that um, it wasn't what it seemed at first. Like, he thought that this guy was just, you know, a flat-out crook trying to steal things. And then, you know, he'd go home and he'd see it as a sick daughter. And mm. it, it was really touching. So I, I thought that that was actually pretty cool. Um, and said a lot about, you know, what it is to be Spider-Man. Or any other superhero, really. Yeah. Um, and then in Just Right by Joshua Hale Fielkov and Nuno Plati, Peter's uh, late to give a guest lecture at his alma mater. Imagine that, Peter's late. <laughs> um, and he oh, that wacky he, Peter. Yeah, he's always, always late. being late for everything. Yeah, so he changes into his Spider Man costume, hoping to get across town faster, but one thing or another gets in the way, you know, like saving people and mannequins. Um, <laughs> and he doesn't ever make the lecture, but, it, uh, but he does get to make kids day which again was a really touching ending it was a sweet story with a truly lots of truly funny moments um the art for that wasn't exactly up my alley but it was enjoyable otherwise so you know overall for the hefty 5.99 price tag i mean there's still a lot of good value in here mm -hmm. and i thought it was a good tribute to spider-man and like i said i really liked the first story it was a you know always good to see ramos doing yeah stuff. yeah it was a great job uh so you know definitely if you can find it pick this one up apparently it's already on back order so <laughs> so good luck so hopefully you'll be able to find this one out there um and then i think the last anniversary book for the month is avenging spider-man um, which number is 11 next week so uh you know you want to catch up on all your spidey anniversary stuff you want to pick that up all right and last and certainly not least is lobster johnson and this one which is a one shot uh written by mike minola with art and john or kurt cutie with art by will fredo torres uh the brotherhood of Ra and princess nefuru hold a par party to unroll a stolen mummy but the party is crashed by lobster johnson who soon finds himself held captive as a sacrifice, and that's when all hell breaks loose as a mummy rises. <laughs> okay. I'm disappointed by this book. Oh, that's a shame. And I'm really sad about that because I love Binola's mm -hmm. writing, especially with Hellboy and BPRD. Mm -hmm. yeah. But here it's so predictable, mm -hmm. and that makes me sad. Yeah. You start the story off, and you pretty much know from the get-go where this story is going. Yeah. And for me, that's sad. Um, but as always, the art, the art here is nice. It's it's a fun, pulpy feel to it. Yeah. Um, but like I said, the story, sadly, just is so predictable. You just can't really get into it. Yeah. And it really makes it not worth reading, mm -hmm. even with the fun, pulpy art style. Uh, but honestly, yeah, um, I can't recommend this one at all, uh, unless you're a huge gigantic hellboy fan it must have everything yes but other than that i can't highly recommend it unless like i said you're a huge hellboy fan mm -hmm. uh this was just so disappointing and i expect much better from Mignola. Mm -hmm. so sadly i cannot recommend it so we will see you next week when we talk about superman and wonder, wonder woman, woman dating together. well getting together more than anything. Yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, we will see you next week. Have a good one, and we'll see you maybe at Fan Expo. <laughs>